All right, we are now live. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, we are everybody. now. We are now with the one and only Kuroziha. Yay! Yay! And I'm with the one and only Kurukana. Woo! Yay! Only does it work on my side. <laughs> Sorry, I have to yeah, go inside. Was... Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How are you today, Rosie? I'm good. I'm so, so good. Thank you. How are you doing, Kanat? Amazing. Because we are here together doing this live. That's why today is a special day for me. It <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah, so how, I've been how looking have... forward. To... Sorry. Yeah. You are first. I was you just going to say that I have been looking forward to this so much. I know, me too. I've been looking because we, we planned this weeks ahead, right? So it's been a very special occasion for both of us. Exactly. Right. It's been in the diary for a long time. <laughs> okay. Rosie, do you want to say hi to your audience maybe a little bit? Then after that, I can yes, see the audience. Yes, definitely. So, hi, everybody. So actually, I haven't done a live in so, so long. So actually, I should just apologize to my lovely fans who are so supportive. And I've seen so many people ask me, like, why haven't you done live? Like, where have, where have you been? Like, what have you been doing? Basically, I've been so, so busy for the last month. But I feel like next month I will be doing live again. So yeah, I'm back. <laughs> and it's a good way to do live again back with Kana. <laughs> so yeah, Yay! I will be doing it again. Back from June, I will be back doing it regularly. So I'm so sorry, everybody, that I have disappeared for so long. It's been a while, but a month, too long. <laughs> exactly. So for <laughs> the audience from uh, Rosie Kurosi page, you'd probably have to thank me because I'm the one that kind of like, Rosie, please do live with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so good. It's so good. Anna. I've just been so Amazing. busy working and now I'm back, back for good. Yeah, let's do this together. So let's say hi to our audience just a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sarah, hi. Sarah is from the Philippines. Oh, wow. Yes, Hi, Sarah. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, Sabaydi. Oh, I'm guessing you're from Laos, I think, right? Sabaydi, ha. Hello. Ah, Kunnatha Sila. Hello. Kun Papaya. Hi. Ah, and Kun Kit, I think. Kit Kit. Hello, how are you, ladies? We're great, thank you. Ah, doing great. Kun Jan, so I be Ah, somebody said, Kun Anusha, I miss you so much, Rosie. Ah, with like <laughs> so many so hearts. Much. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hi, boat teacher. Um, okay, we have a lot of comments going on here. The comment situation is going wild. All right. So today we have a special topic for a special audience like you guys. What are we going to talk about today, Rosie? Okay. So our topic of today is culture shock and adapting to a new culture, which should be a really, really interesting topic. It's something which we have talked a little bit about in the past. We've touched on some things, but we're going to go into it a little bit deeper. Exactly. So today we're going to go like super in details. And also maybe we can share because you lived, of course, in Thailand, right? And I have lived abroad yep. as well. Um, so maybe we can share about the ways that we try to adapt and, you know, adjust in a new culture, maybe. Exactly. Yes. And of course, we would like to hear from the audience as well. So everybody mm -hmm. get ready to share all of your details and opinions with us because we would love to hear so yes get ready to please share with us as well absolutely i think the comment section is getting really excited <laughs> as Yay! well so so of course i think we can um maybe we can share a lot of experience and thoughts here just like rosie said so 
be prepared. Do not passively only listen to us, but take action in learning as well. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the first question that um, Rosie and I would love to ask you is, what is to you, in your view mm. point, um, in your opinion, what is culture chalk? Mm. Mm. What is culture chalk? <laughs> your answer to you. There's no right or wrong. What is culture chalk? Okay. For, exactly. for you first, maybe Rosie asking Rosie first to you in your opinion, what is culture yep. shock? Okay, so for me, I guess culture shock is when often when you go to a new country, it could be when you're traveling, but it's often mm -hmm. I think when you spend longer time because if you're just traveling, then you're not really experiencing that much of the culture. So for me, it's definitely someone that's spending a great deal of time abroad, maybe studying or living, working. And it's often the experiences that you have when you're there that are quite surprising and maybe hard for us to understand. And that can be a shock to us. So obviously there's different parts to it, which we will go into. But in summary, that's what I would say for culture shock. Oh, that's kind of like super, it sums up everything already. What do I have left to say? <laughs> oh, no, um, sorry, sorry. You can say in your own words. I'm good, so it's sorry. Good. It's good. It's good. No, that's that's actually a compliment. So yeah, I think you, you summed it up pretty well already. So I'm just going to be um, someone who reads <laughs> from Brow University definition <laughs> for you guys. Um, actually, this, they say that cultural adjustment or culture shock, as it is commonly called, comes from being cut off from things you're familiar with, right? So mm -hmm. when you have lived your whole life in one culture, moving into another culture, living in another country could be difficult. And culture shock doesn't result from just one event. Uh, it doesn't strike suddenly or with any cause. It built slowly from a series of small events. Um, it also comes from living and working in like an, a vague, ambiguous um, situation. Living abroad will make you question your values, which you may have taken absolutes before. So, of course, it, it just like Rosie said, it's not like when you go travel to another country and you're like, oh, <laughs> but it's usually that you decide to live there for a period of time. That's where you feel like, oh, there's a need of adjustment and you find it maybe difficult. Right. OK, let's see from the comments, shall we? Yeah, let's have a look. All right. Now, what is culture shock? Ah, my love. Mm. Mm. There we go. We have Kun 3T, 3 tree. Oh, interesting. Rosie, do you want to talk about this one? Sure. Okay, so I'll read it to begin with. So culture shock for me is like when you move to somewhere else, excellent, and you get a little confused with that country's social norms. So um, 3 tree, I actually think your answer is really, really nice. You said the same thing that we did about moving somewhere else. And you're right, it is about feeling confused. It's maybe that we're not, we don't feel angry. It's often just like you say, confusion. And it often, like you said, is associated with the country's social norms. Um, so for me, I think that's an excellent answer from Three Tree, a lovely Three answer. Three Tree. It's, it's a very hard name to pronounce. Three, yeah, I know. Three tree. I know. <laughs> yeah. Three tree. But it's cool. It's a cool name. Yeah, it's a cool it name. Is. Yes. Um, uh, right? Um, uh, the condition of entering a new culture. Mm, brief and mm. kind of like sums up everything. Yeah. It does. Exactly. It's really nice. Yeah. Perfect. Ah, okay. And Kun Tatsana. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure if I pronounce correctly. Rosie, do you want to talk about this comment? Sure. Okay. So the fact of knowing different cultures between your primary culture and a new culture you have just learned. So again, a really, really nice summary. So like you said, it's often to do with the difference. And I think this is a very good point. It's about how the things that surprise or shock us, it's when we compare them with our own culture. Because if we don't compare them, then there's no shock at all. <laughs> so I think this, again, I think is a really nice summary. So mm. very, very good. 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> one last one last definition from Kun Maria is the mm. culture shock is about something we have not seen before. Like we go to new a new place. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Something that we find like unfamiliar with or we are not used to. Right. Something that could be like uh, uh, something could be new to us. Could be new to us. Right. Okay. Um. What's what's culture shock? Called in Thai. What's a, what's the word in Thai? Do you know? Do you know the word? In Thai? No. So I actually was searching to see whether there was an actual word, and then I oh. don't feel like like most of the articles that were mm -hmm. writing about it in Thai, they were using mm -hmm. the word culture shock. So they were like, oh. yeah, all of the, yeah, all of the articles actually use the word culture shock, which I thought was quite interesting. Hmm. So it's like it's like um. In, in Thai, we call it right? So the, exactly. the whole, like, we just use a real word for it, like computer software, like, we just use the English word for it, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, I mean, there might be a word, but I just didn't come across <laughs> it when I was searching for it. <laughs> because I was thinking about it now, and I, I, couldn't, like, I couldn't think of any word in Thai. But if it's in Thai, for anyone who doesn't know, เอ่อมันก็คือความที่สมมุติว่าเราไปอยู่ในคัลเจอร์ใหม่หรือว่าวัฒนธรรมใหม่ๆแล้วเราก็รู้สึกแบบจะไม่ทุนกับอันนี้
I mean, I actually, I can find them here, but I have mm -hmm. to maybe go to different shops and it's not like everything's together and I can just walk in and be like, oh, look at the lovely bread and the cheese and what else? Oh, I know like yeah. vegetarian products because I'm kind of vegetarian. Mm. So that means that in the UK, there's so many like fake meats basically, but in mm -hmm. Thailand, it's harder to find them. And that's one thing when I go back to the UK, it's so nice to have like this big selection of fake meat. Oh, that's, that's cool. That's cool. I remember you don't eat pork, right? I, I don't exactly. I don't eat pork or chicken or beef. <laughs> okay. Okay. I remember you ordered yeah. shrimp. <laughs> that's how we yes, ate exactly, together. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Good memory. Okay, <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Okay, maybe another another element in off yes. Shop. That would be oh. language. Sure. Yes. Let's move on okay. to language. So for me, I think that language has to be like one of the biggest things um, mm. when it comes to culture shock, and I think mm -hmm. this is just the reason that not only maybe are people trying to learn new language but also the way people express themselves in that language is also challenging as well for many people but people i guess just the way people communicate as well so i think it's not just the words and um, mm -hmm. it's just learning how people interact in that language it can be okay. also very very challenging and it's something which i will talk about more in a little bit but for me that was a big part of it for sure for sure yeah i think i would talk a little bit about more it's not just saying it's not just the words knowing the words the grammar of that language i think yep it's be able to culturally express i think that's exactly that's, also, that's it i don't know if that's a term yeah but definitely yeah um, i'm just gonna do a little bit of break to to ask while you're talking so that maybe our audience can share like if you have any elements of culture shock that you can think of right now Please share with us in the comments so we can maybe check it and, and talk about it. Okay. Definitely. All right. Yes. All right. What's the what's next element a next element you want to talk about? Rosie? Let's talk about values. For sure. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So I think this is again another difficult one. I think when you move to another country or you're spending a long time in that country. So the values is what kind of is kind of accepted in that country and what people believe and then mm. there's probably you will experience some things where you're like why do they think like that or why do they think that's okay but in my culture we wouldn't think that was okay so exactly. that's basically yeah. the values and again it is really challenging the values part of it it is it is it's like i think it's deeply rooted in 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 the culture and the history as well so i think understanding how people think and value things Ex really really help exactly all right next we have i think dress which is kind of mm, what do you think about this one um so for me i for me i wouldn't ever see it as a culture shock i would just more see it as something which you would more notice it would be more like an observation like oh people in thailand like to dress like this as opposed to a shock that like oh my gosh why do they dress like that yeah. however however i guess if you were moving to um, a country maybe which was muslim and the people like the majority of the people were islam mm -hmm. then in that sense maybe you would have to adapt in some way and maybe have to like cover up more so that could be a challenge for some people for sure for sure yeah i think uh the dress i think for me is the formality of it it's kind of like something to do with it as well like in because in, in thailand we have uniforms when we go to school you need right but when yep. i went to the states or to spain we literally yep. students literally wear like anything including exactly. pajamas to, to the classes. hundred percent. Oh my gosh. I feel, I've never felt so my, so me before. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, it's for me. Yes. Okay. Last but not least, we have this thing. Uh, Etiquette and behavior. behavior. Yeah. So I, this one, I guess, is just the general norms and yeah, how people behave, 
um, what's polite, what's impolite um, mm -hmm. in a culture. And again, for me, this is quite a big part of it as well, because small things from your own country that you think maybe are polite and then you come go to another country and then that's seen as like rude or the opposite. Mm -hmm. These kind of small things which you don't even think about and then you do something or say something and people are like, oh, you shouldn't do that. And that's like, oh gosh, like did I do something that I shouldn't have done? Did I say something I shouldn't? So these small things, yeah, they're definitely a big part of culture shock, I would say. Exactly, exactly. I think I'm most afraid of this part of like, will I do anything like disrespectful to that exactly. community? So it's definitely crucial to know that before going to any country. Okay, let's maybe read from you guys. Um, any elements of culture shock that you feel like it's quite important, let's share with us. Um, okay, let me, let me, oops. Uh, uh, okay. Kun Theo said, um, like in Australia, <laughs> people celebrate Christmas in summer. Is that included? As a, they, they do? Yes. I, oh, really? Yes. Yeah, so my friend actually, like my best friend has moved to Australia, actually. And so she mm -hmm. celebrates Christmas when it's hot there. And she's like said how like Australian people, because it's their summer, so they think of Christmas as like having a barbecue, going to the beach. And she was like, it's so weird. So yes, it is culture shock. Yes, sure. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I didn't know this before. This is yes. like new fact for me. That's wow. Oh, wow. I'm learning from you guys now. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> um, um, okay, let me see. Um, oh, okay. This one is interesting <laughs> no, for Thai people. Uh, yes. Was it shocking for you when you come to Thailand, when you first came to Thailand? Oh, was it a shock? I more thought it was funny. Mm -hmm. I more didn't really understand it. And then I was like, I don't really understand what it's for. And then, I, I mean, I did understand, but not. I didn't really see the point of it. And oh. then now I kind of like, I mean, do I use it myself? Or oh, I won't go into details. <laughs> but for me, I'm kind of used to it now. To be honest, it makes no difference to me. For me, whether we have it or we don't, actually, I'm actually more in the middle. But it makes no difference. <laughs> It makes a huge difference for me. Like I, like I can't, <laughs> I can't <laughs> live with it. I, like I, I think I realized that. But <laughs> I'm not gonna go into details. But then it's, it was really uncomfortable for me to go abroad and not having that. But I, I just, I, I just learned to get used to not having it and find a replacement. <laughs> find but a yes. replacement. <laughs> Yes, like wet wipes or something like that. <laughs> I'm not going to go into detail. Seriously. Um, oh, okay. This one is also interesting. Another element of culture shock is, I think, is beliefs. Mm. Mm, yeah. Definitely. Mm. Like very close to, so. to values, I think. Values. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what people believe in general, what's accepted in society. Exactly, exactly. All right. Wow. So many things. Oh, you guys, by the way, if you want to read the things that we discussed from today's, um, I put the link down below, um, the articles that we are we are referencing for today's mm. um, live. Oh, okay. Kun metamor, met, met, metamor. When studied in USA, it's easy for people to greet someone you mm. never met before. Yeah. I think we talk to strangers more comfortably. Like it's kind of like when you see people in elevator, it would be like, good morning, have a good day or something like that. So can I, so you've lived in the U S and mm -hmm. do Americans do that then? Is it like in general, do people greet each other a lot more? 
Yeah, I think in in comparison, like I think Americans um a more like you know they're more comfortable with strangers. Like if if you yep. go if you you know walk into elevators and you see like someone there, you'd be like, "Good morning, good, good afternoon, how are you?" Something like that. Or maybe you know when you go to shops and something like that, and you get some service, you'll be like talking to them, like "Have a good day" or something like that. Um, I think talking to strangers in in America is a little bit. A little bit more, a little easier than and then in Thailand, I would say. But it depends. But in general, I think in comparison, maybe it's it's easier for Americans to talk to strangers. Maybe mm. because I, in yeah. my opinion, Americans are even more open than British people. Because I've been mm. in the lift sometimes with Americans in Thailand, and mm -hmm. they've been like, "Hey, how you doing? Where are you off to?" Mm -hmm. Or like. How, how's your day? And sure, British people are friendly, but I think Americans are even like one step, even more friendly. It's lovely. I love mm -hmm. it. I think it's so nice. Instead of like standing in the lift, feeling awkward. Oh, this is actually mm -hmm. quite interesting. Thai people mm -hmm. are the total opposite in the lift. So like, I would say English people just kind of like stand, look around, maybe smile, maybe say hi. Amer Americans are like, hey, and then Thai people often look down in the lift, like they actually exactly. actively look down and make themselves smaller in the lift. And then everyone's very polite in the lift, like extra polite. And I don't know why, but just see the lift seems the perfect example of Thai society <laughs> summed up in a lift. <laughs> yeah, but once like once you kind of I think the the thing is that I think it's the opposite because I think in Thailand, if people once you get to know the person, it's it's I think it's easier to get close to them. But for so Americans, it's e e easier to make acquaintance. You know what I mean? It's kind of oh, like ah, ha 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 or something like that. But um, I don't know. But for Thai people, once you get to know them, you are like collectivist like. Hey, together, we together. <laughs> oh my God, 100%. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, Kana. I do think that Thai people are like you say, once you kind of click with them, once you have that nice relationship with them, then you're close and that's it. Yeah, the bond is like strong. In <laughs> exactly, the strong bond is there. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, all right. Um, oh, okay. Somebody uh, said something. Oh, sorry to interrupt hmm. you, Kanat. Yeah, Somebody no, 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 said no, no, something about public mm -hmm. transportation, which I thought was a really oh. nice example. Mm. Definitely, mm. because this is something which when you go to a new country, how you travel around um, is such a big part of your daily life. Like if you're used to always driving or you're used to cycling, like in Oxford, I always cycle because it's so convenient but obviously when i came to bangkok then i have to drive i have to find other ways that work and i have to adapt to that so i think public transportation is actually a really nice example because it's such a big part of your daily life that you have to adapt to so yeah i just wanted to add that one yeah for sure i think some of the countries are so even though your your i think if in, in Thailand, somehow, if you can afford your own private cars, you're less likely to get a public transportation, right? But I think in many cities around the world, um, in, in many, uh, of course, in many Western countries or so, even though you can afford a private cars, there may, there could be like most many times that you still use public transportation, right? Exactly. Like in London, I think... I read that only 40% of locals in London own a car. Um, but that's because people are happy though to take, because obviously the, the subway, we call it the underground, it's such a mm -hmm. good network all over London that people are happy to use it and they don't see it as a big deal. They don't see like, oh, like I have to use a car to show that I have money. It's just accepted in general that basically most people use the underground to get around just because of how convenient it is totally totally absolutely all right all right okay now let's maybe some... okay 
Okay, shall we, because we have quite a lot to cover, shall we just yes, go sorry. to the next part? <laughs> I, was like, do, I, like, I definitely wanted to, wanted to talk more, but I guess at the very end, then maybe we can talk like super intense conversation. <laughs> sure, yep, no, no, perfect. Sorry. All right. Me I, I think, <laughs> no, I'm talking too much. I'm talking too much. Seriously, I get so hyped when I talk with you. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, so now I think what, what's really helped me when I, when I first uh, faced culture shock since mm. when I was really, really young, because I went abroad, uh, I went to India, right, when I was younger. Um, yep. So that was like a huge um, culture shock for me. And a lot of adjustment has been going on you know, at, at that time. And I was, I feel, I felt so young to kind of adjust to everything. So knowing these helped me a lot. So in, in terms of culture shock, there are stages of it. And mm. there are four main stages that usually not just you, but almost everybody kind of go through, but the duration may vary. But, yep. um, but of course, like you have to go through all these things. The first stage is the honeymoon period, the honeymoon stage. You can probably guess from Rosie Dance that it's kind of like, <laughs> oh, sunshine and rainbow and bed of roses. You know, when you just enter the country and you feel like, wow, this is so cool. They have this, they have that. This is like, the views are so good. It's the novelty of it, the new uh, aspects of it makes you feel excited, right? Makes you feel like, wow, this is so exciting. Just like when you travel to another country for a short trip, that's something that you 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 feel excited. You feel like it's the adventures, right? So um, it's the initial euphoria. An initial no euphoria Oh, so happy, right? So that's the first stage. Um, but then it can last for about a few days or maybe a week. But then you are probably going to face the second stage, which is the frustration stage. Mm. It how do I how do I pronounce this? Irritability. How do I pronounce yes, exactly. this? Exactly. Irritability. Irritability. On point. <laughs> <laughs> and hostility. So um, after a while, you start to feel like, oh, but there are so many things that I'm not familiar with. There are so many things that um, I feel like there's it, there are differences, there are problems. That seems to be a huge thing for you because you, you're not used to it, right? And mm -hmm. uh, you might feel frustrated. Everyone feels frustrated when they move to a new country, I'm sure. And we're going to talk about it, right? Um, and this is probably the most difficult part of being abroad is that you, you feel like, oh, why are they like this? Why are they not like this? It's better to do this. They're not doing this at all. So that's something that, you should look out for and that's the hardest part right but then after the frustration stage you're going to reach the adjustment stage or you can call it gradual adjustment which means it's if you know after you start to adjust a little bit you spend some more time trying to understand the culture trying to appreciate the parts of the culture and understand from their point of view um, you start to feel more at home in your surroundings right? you start to know where you belong and why it works that way Right. Um, and then the last stage would be the acceptance stage or the adaptation. So mm -hmm. you now feel kind of like get used to it. It doesn't mean that you are completely like, oh, I lived in uh, in the UK for one month. I'm now British. <laughs> it's probably <laughs> not that. <laughs> but, but but you start to understand how things work and why it works that way. And mm -hmm. yeah, you, you learn the new behaviors and manners and um, maybe shape some old ones a little bit and try to maybe get into it a little bit more. So that would be the acceptance stage. All right, mm -hmm. so these are the four stage. And um, I think maybe we can ask the audience now about yep. what their culture shock is. Have you ever experienced culture shock? And that's a, a grammar mistake right here. Have you ever experienced? It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Have you ever experienced closure shock? I correct myself. Okay. Um, so you guys, please send the 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 answers or maybe share your experience with us. I'm gonna go on to interview Rosie right here. <laughs> Have you? Have you ever experienced closure shock? <laughs> Okay, so obviously I'll be talking about Thailand. I mean, I haven't lived in any, any other country, so Thailand will be my main subject of discussion here. 
Um, mm -hmm. So obviously I came to Thailand 10 years ago um, when I studied at university. I came to Chiang Mai, that was the first time I came here. And it's such a hard question, have I experienced culture shock? Because I would say like, yes and no. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that it was anything, like I didn't feel like I was going through these stages exactly but there are definitely parts of these stages which I can relate to and actually when I look at the different stages I feel like people may go through the different two and three I feel like you can kind of go back and forth between them because we mm. have the the obviously the frustration stage right. and then you kind of start to feel like you adjust and then I feel like there's been times when I've maybe gone back a little bit to the frustration, maybe about something else, like a, something else that's felt a bit strange. Mm -hmm. And then I've done the adjustment stage back and forth between those two until I've reached like the acceptance stage. Mm. Um, so for me then, um, talking about culture shock, like what actually has shocked me in Thailand, I guess for me, like one of the biggest things is I guess kind of just the way Thai people like interact with each other. And it's not to do with that this is a shock for me, it's more to do with adapting. And I think that when we talk about a culture shock, I think we can include how we have to adapt ourselves to fit in that culture. So like for me, because I'm, well, I'm quite like a bubbly like person and I Fearful, like talk a lot and I can be like energetic <laughs> yeah and so I feel like when I first came here I feel like I kind of had to adapt and adjust to the culture and um, I felt like some people found my I think they felt like my not confidence but just my outgoing personality I feel like sometimes they thought it was like too much so in that mm. sense I had to kind of like tone down myself mm -hmm. and I don't mm -hmm. I guess it's been fine because I've grown up because obviously I came here 10 years ago and then I've lived here for the last seven years so I guess as a person I've also grown up as well and so I'm I've kind of toned mm -hmm. down and I'm less excitable obviously I'm still like mm -hmm. full of energy but I feel like mm -hmm. I have to just be more in some ways like I understand there are some situations like a little mm -hmm. bit where I feel like okay, in this situation in Thailand, I can't be too loud. Like if I'm with like an adult or, you know, there are just some situations where I feel like it's just best and easier in Thai culture to just be a little bit quieter <laughs> and oh. kind of just be pulled back a little bit. And I don't, but I don't see this as a negative thing. I see mm. it actually quite nice. I feel like I myself have developed as well in the sense that, Actually, it's been quite nice. At first, it was <clears> kind of the frustration stage, like, oh, like, why do I have to, like, adapt? Why do I have to change myself? But then, actually, as I've got older, I've kind of understood, I guess, once you, the more you understand a culture, then you can adapt mm -hmm. more to it naturally. So nowadays, mm -hmm. it comes naturally, and I don't feel like, okay, I don't actively tell myself, like, okay, this situation, Rosie, be calmer. But I just mm. it just comes naturally, and again, it may be to do with age as well. So it's quite like mm. a complex one for me. But I would say that's the biggest thing that I've noticed in myself to do with Thai culture. Mm, very interesting. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like I. But I gotta say this like right away because I think we we all, including myself, and also your fans and followers, so like we we love you for your energy. <laughs> Seriously, I feel like if if Rosie decided <clears throat> maybe today to be, hello everyone, so like, I would be like, you are not Rosie, <laughs> no. <laughs> but oh, yeah, um, no, maybe maybe in the past I was like even more, like maybe mm. it was even I I don't know. Again, maybe it is just age as well. But mm. I just feel like in some situations though, I feel like okay, just mm. calm down be composed. Mm -hmm. I would say it's to do with composure, that Thai people oh. are composed. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas English people are less composed. I would mm -hmm. say, and it's something actually when I notice when I go back to the UK, I notice mm -hmm. that English people are less composed. 
in themselves. Um, I'm hey, a very I'm bad example of a Thai person. I'm much less capable. Oh, but yes, very, yes. Very, you know, I would say that all <laughs> Thai people, I would say all Thai people are generally they compose themselves in general. Like, mm. I don't mean like 100% like, oh, hello. <laughs> I don't mean like that one. I just mean in general, like, I don't know. Yeah, 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 could be. There Maybe are many situations and yeah, and locations that we kind of have to be like, <laughs> so I think we, we kind of, <laughs> Maybe we kind of learn to be that. Yeah, totally, totally. Maybe we, we just read a little bit of um of the the comments a little bit, and then may, maybe I'll add mine. Um, Please do. Okay. Oh, uh, Quintio again, right? Yes, I have. Um, when I was in Japan, there was uh, there were differences on how people go up and down stairs in Tokyo and Osaka. <gasps> yes, left Ooh, and right yes. sides. Ah, why don't I let people just don't care that much? <laughs> Is there any uh, stuff like that in England? The questions for Crew Rosie? Oh, Were there, like, anything? Need, um, it, it, it's like, do, do you have to, yeah, do you have to walk on the left or on the right? I feel like there is more order. I don't think there's strictures in Japan. But I feel like there is some kind of order that is actually on the underground. I think people stand to the side. I know, yes, on the escalators, normally there's kind of like the rule, not the rule, the unspoken rule that you should stand to the side and leave space for anybody that wants to walk up the escalators. So if you stand to the side, whereas in Thailand, I guess people block the escalators and you're like, have to say, I'm usually the the one in a rush. Always, I'm like. Me too. Me too. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Um. I think these days now we are trying to kind of like have the the directions kind of, but I don't. I'm not sure about the uh, escalator and stuff. But but. I guess we kind of have to the the lanes for the walking lanes in the places now. Maybe I don't know if it helps, but yeah, we kind of have that now. <laughs> um, yeah, any anything? Um, okay, siang nakong lah. Okay. Uh, siang siang nakong, lupa kah? Mungkin ada orang bawa siang kanakong mac. Siang kong mac. Pergi speaker lagi lupa. ทุกคนฟังฟังเอ่อถ้าใครฟังคณะอยู่ถ้าถ้าเสียงดังไปบอกหน่อยนะคะนะไม่รู้ว่าเสียงหรือว่าเสียงนะอาจจะดังไปห
uh, the roads and the traffic. That's kind of mm. another element and how people drive. So th Definitely. there's this joke that uh, the Indian uh, gentleman told me and my mom about. They said that you can have like anything in your car. It's okay if any parts of your car is broken. The only thing that needs to work is your, what's that called? Horn. Horn, oh, right? yes. Yeah. So you will always oh be like, bah, bah, bah. so if you go to India, you will only hear the sound like, bah, 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 all day long seriously I, I like here or maybe in 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 the uk i'm, I'm assuming yeah you yep. only like you only hear like that when something is wrong right you must exactly like, oh, right of course in india yep. there's no like it's non-stop it's like a background noise you know it's all, all, all always like that <laughs> What's the reason? What are they beeping for? I've always wondered this because I've I've never been to India, but I've heard this. So what mm -hmm. is it? Is it to say that they're coming through? What is what are they actually telling everybody when they're doing it? Uh -huh. I have no idea exactly why, but I guess the, yeah. the road regulations is, 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 it could be a little bit vague in many, many places. Uh, there are no exact lanes or people can just go like, like that so <laughs> there are many oh. many places that you kind of instead of sticking to the regulations and the red lights and all these things you kind of have to like oh, i'm coming you better leave or something like that i think oh i assume gosh. that that's the reason why yep. um but um and some of the time you will see the cows walking on this on the road on the streets okay. when every <laughs> car on the on the road will have to wait for the the cows, because I, I I don't know the exact reasons, but I think because they they it, it's Hinduism, right? It's it's part of the Hindu of Hinduist belief um, that yep. cows are 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 value. They're they are like the, the creatures of God. So that's kind of like you're not never gonna see cows walking on on the road in Thailand, right? But over there, it's really, you can expect to see the cows walking past by and you just have to stop and wait for it to, yeah, you oh can my go. God. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's the first thing. Um, and maybe another thing probably is the head motion, I think. Oh yeah. The, yeah, so, so there will be, uh, there will be, you know, people, <laughs> uh, <laughs> If they say yes, they go, okay, very good. Okay, okay. Very good. you go to the back, <laughs> all right, very good, very pretty. So we <laughs> thought, <laughs> you're very good at it. <laughs> so I thought that, that that was no, right? Because I feel like when, when there's a, a head motion, it means for yeah. us, it's like, no, 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 don't exactly. do that. No, 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 it's not true, right? For Indian, this is kind of like, okay, very good, all right, oh you know? God. So. <laughs> I thought that, that was a no. I, I wasn't sure whether that's a yes or no, but this is yes. No one's like this. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something oh, that yeah. I kinda... What? So, no, 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 no. Not good, not good, or something like that. But uh, for yes, okay, very good. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a uh, the different thing, right? Yes, mm. holy cows. That's that's the word. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, for the states. Um, there are many, many things in the, uh, in the States, but I think the, the, the most important thing, and I didn't feel frustrated, kind of, kind of get it right away, but I didn't feel like it's being as commonly practiced. I think giving the tips in the States, it's quite, mm. it's such a big thing, you know, um, cause when I first landed in, um, in, in the city, in the Mad in Madison, and yeah. I, I was like, I, I got a taxi to my dormitory from the airport, right? And then yep. I I didn't know that I had to give the tips right away, right? I didn't know how it works. So I give, like, I think I, I give like a, I didn't get a, I, I just hand them the money and the driver sure. just like didn't give me the changes, right? And I was like, why? Like, I, I there's a, you need to give me changes, right? And he was like, oh, that's for the tip. So I felt really like, are you trying like to like, is there like a scam or like, are you cheated? And I just yeah. knew that oh, it's something that it needs to be done. So the driver keep telling me like, you know, here in the States, like you need to get the tip. So like, 
this is the fees, but then the rest is the tips or something like that. And mm. it's practice that in a way that if you don't give the tips, it's kind of like you're really rude. Okay. In a yep. way. So I think we, we kind of had to learn how to like, oh, in this stage, how much tips should we give? And I work at the yep. restaurant as a waitress as well, right? So it was a big deal for me. Now I know whenever I go, uh, wherever I go in the States, you need to kind of like, you know, consider to give a tips. More or less, that depends on you and the state, but you need to tip. <laughs> sure. So I so think that's, that's a big part. Mm -hmm. Come out with the driver then. So he took the change and then so he didn't give you back. Did he not give you back the money for then you to then give him back the tip? Or how did it work in that situation? I, if I remember correctly, like I yep. let, let's say the fees is like the, the fare is like this much, right? And then yep. I give like this this much of money, for example. Yep. And I expect to get like, let's say I I expect to get like uh ten dollars back ten bucks mm. back but then yeah. i only get like i don't know like five back so oh so then i was really like what's going on why are you not giving me like the the money back right I, i'm supposed to like cool. the finger say this so I, i'm supposed to get this much of money and he looks like a little bit irritated <laughs> so i was really like <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> he was like you know what if you come to the states you need to like give like you need to tips uh the the people and the service that you get so it's kind of like it's we do that around here <laughs> so i was okay, really like, fine. You're like yeah. oh okay sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry and i was really like i was already worried right I, I was already like oh am i gonna do this is it true that it needs to be because there's no like rule saying that exactly. you need to tip how much how much right so that's the biggest the hardest part for me for thinking about how much you should tip yeah. yeah do you know what? tipping is actually an interesting part of like culture in the sense mm -hmm. that like again yeah, i think in all countries it's so different because in england for example you should tip but mm -hmm. it's only like i think it's less than in, in america i think it's about 10 percent and mm -hmm. it's i think in america is it like 15 percent or 20 percent um, the, the thing is it's different yeah. from one state to another <gasps> Oh my gosh, you're That's like, I think New York, 20%. I don't know. I think the, the highest, usually it's around 10 to 15%. Um, yep. and, and I think it's kind of like you kind of have to check before you go to that state, like what's common. Oh, okay, tip. fine. If I'm, if, if, I under, if, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. So, but usually it's about like 10 to 15%. But, but let's say that if you go to a restaurant and you get a really, really great service, then you might yep. want to tip more, then that's up to you, right? But but the standard okay. should be like 10%, I think. Okay. Yeah. But like in Japan, I think that in Japan, mm -hmm. they don't tip at all, for example. I think that oh. I've tried tipping and they basically don't really accept it. It's just like not part of their culture at all. Or I read, mm -hmm. I can't remember the word, I experienced it or someone told me, but they basically, yeah, in Japan, they don't really accept tips. Yeah, if anybody knows about tipping in Japan, then comment down below. But I think I've heard that you kind of shouldn't tip. Oh. For whatever reason, there's almost like you shouldn't tip. And I don't know the exact reason, but apparently Japanese people don't tip at all. Maybe I'm wrong. Mm. Maybe, yeah, yeah. So please comment down below and tell me. I really want to know too. <laughs> I really yes. want to know too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, now we have a lot of experience um, to discuss about now yeah, we have yeah. ah okay P Pinon actually Pinon talked about uh first time in Australia I don't get it when Aussie say mate uh good day mate I could, oh, okay <laughs> you don't know what it means right but you say that in 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 in, in England as well right is it um not really I mean we use the word mate but we wouldn't say it like an Aussie person would say like, good day, mate. They say it like, good day, mate. With their strong Australian accent. So yes, we wouldn't say which that. I can't imitate. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Good day, mate. Good day, yeah. good day, good day, mate. Good day, good day. Yeah, 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 day, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really love their, their um, A sound, like today. It today, yeah. Today. Yeah. 
it's really cool. <laughs> it's nice. Oh my god, I love it today, today, today. So, today. good day, mate. Today. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. In Taiwan, most Ooh. people don't like to take a shower in the morning. Mm. Besides, they also love having vegetarian food. These are uh, these are the culture shock for me. Mm. What do you yeah, think about really this? So, yeah, really, really interesting, actually, because I thought that in all Asian countries, because obviously in Thailand, you love showering. And this was actually another, not a culture shock for me, but I would say that Thai people are very, very clean, and which is great. It's wonderful. But it's kind of like in Thailand, you have to take two showers a day. And I do myself. But it's like if I were to tell a Thai person, that I hadn't showered in the morning, it would almost be like the most horrifying thing ever. <laughs> Whereas an English person couldn't care. They'd be like, oh, I haven't showered for like two days. Don't worry about it. But in Thailand, if I were to tell somebody, oh, I didn't shower this, just to let you know, I didn't shower. They'd be like, no, like there is no way. <laughs> like it would be like made in a joke out of and like, but it would still almost be like a bit shocking. Yeah. Um, yeah, whereas in England, we couldn't care. So, yeah, it's an interesting point about in Taiwan because in England, we only take one shower a day or one shower every two days. <laughs> yes, 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 for sure. I think I think also for um, in the States and maybe it's uh, the climate has to do a lot to do with this because in Thailand, it's always hot, right? So it's kind of like... definitely. We always take a shower, um, but in India as well, in Spain, in the States, um, people don't take showers. It depends on the season, of course, but but people don't usually take showers like two times a day. That's two exactly. times a day is kind of like you're super hygienic, like super exactly. clean. Exactly. That's, that's what's interesting because it's like all Thai people, all Thai society is super clean, which is obviously so nice. And it's now become part of my daily routine. But it's just different. It's, yeah. And also interesting about this comment about the vegetarian food in England. It's also um, a big part of our culture nowadays. Um, vegetarian food and vegan food. There's like been this like whole wave that's come to the UK. And so many people have turned vegetarian or vegan. And like I said, it's so easy to find um alternatives different meat alternatives so yeah really interesting those comments actually mm. yeah so Taiwan sounds more like England <laughs> mm. all right all right now we have another one um do you ah okay let's talk about this one yes shoes wearing shoes in the mm. in the house what do you think in what's it like in England so in England um it definitely depends on the house itself so in my house, we, my mum always asked us to take our shoes off. Um, actually, we had a carpet in the house. So I think it depends whether, what flooring you have. If you have a wooden floor, then it's maybe more acceptable. If you have a carpet, then you probably need to take off your shoes. So I think it very much depends on the house. But I would say in general, if you wear your shoes in the house, it's not seen as shocking in the UK, it wouldn't be like, oh my gosh. Whereas in Thailand, it probably would be like, oh my gosh, you have broken <laughs> the rule in Thailand where you exactly. should not wear shoes inside. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think that's uh, that's kind of like the most notable thing when in, in the Western culture and in the Eastern culture, yeah, for sure, for sure. Now, oh, we have a lot of comments here going on, okay. Oh my gosh. Mm, yeah, another another where um, another point about wearing shoes in the house. Oh. Um, ah, okay. My Kun Kanita, Kanita, my Indian friend told me that her dad do this all the time and he has to do because it's insult for making the noise. Oh, you mean the horn? Oh, oh yeah, it must be the is it the horns? My Indian friend told me her I do this all the time and he has to do it because it installed for making the noise oh also maybe they just see that's the reason for it they think well it's there 
So I'm going to use it. Why not? Yeah. Why do you keep it if you are not going to use it? Exactly. Just like, you know, <laughs> the, the light signal, I'm going to turn left and right. I'm, if I'm exactly. gonna go, I'm gonna like, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, all right. Are there any others? Have you seen? Yes, yes, yes. Kun Meng said, "Tip depends on service. There's no mm. rules." Yes, yes. And I think that's kind of like um, that's that's what kind of hard for the culture right i i think that the driver is not exactly super somebody said like it i think that this situation is very impolite they have to give the change back yeah i i feel like the thing is i think the driver might not be the best representative <laughs> of the kind of like <laughs> or the culture i don't think so um but i guess i was also being very ignorant about this culture that of tipping right i I thought that I had to give back. And I, I, of course, I didn't know how much I should give as well. But um, there's no rule saying like, if you did not tip mm. me, you did not get off the car. But it's it's kind of like the, like the, you know, the norms and the culture that people do. But yeah, the driver is not being super nice. Of course, he just took it and is like, oh, that's for the tip. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so that's, so that's a, a, a little bit of case. But I, I if I... Uh, were to understand and prepare for it a little bit more, I would have said like, oh, this is uh, the tip for you, blah, blah, blah. But of course I was like, I just landed. So I didn't have enough. Like, <laughs> I would be like, oh, take it, take it. <laughs> yeah. But I do think though, personally for tipping, going back to those, the other co comment about mm -hmm. how it depends on the service. I do mm -hmm. agree with this comment personally, mm -hmm. that I don't mm -hmm. think tipping should be assumed in any situation I feel mm. like okay fine like I think in England we have a nice balance that we have like a general rule if you have good service then you give 10 percent. but if you have a bad service then you wouldn't and then you didn't tip or you left like a lesser tip then people would understand but I do get the feeling that in America it sounds like quite it sounds stricter that like if you don't tip I've heard stories about like waitresses like shouting at the customers or like I I don't know if this is true but I've heard different stories about in America that they're so strict on it and for me I don't like that so much because I feel like you should have the freedom to decide like okay that was a good service I want to tip instead of that you have to tip that's just my opinion for sure for sure for sure yes I think I think absolutely 100 percent and um, I think another thing that could be a, in a good way, it's not really a culture shock. I kind of like it is that, mm. but some people don't like it, um, uh, is, you know, when you go to a restaurant, um, mm. but it depends on the, on the place as well. But when you yeah. go to a certain restaurant, right. And the waitress and the waiters are usually really, really, really like nice. Like, cause they were really, they basically get the tips for, <laughs> like the, the 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 money that they get is 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 not in comparison to the tips that they get are are much lower right so okay. i and i worked as a waitress in a thai restaurant myself yeah. so um i i like actually the the service that they kind of give like they will be checking in on you saying like okay yep. like how do you like the food or Definitely. do you need some more water and like yep. oh do you like this so far thank you so much for stopping by all these like super super nice but it depends on the restaurant as well but i kind of like that <laughs> sure definitely yeah. yeah all right all right i think oh there's so many things to talk about oh. and um, 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 um oh, okay all right, thank you for sharing with us, you guys. Now, um, maybe we can go a little bit over the the part where we provide a little bit more solution for those of you who maybe are dealing with culture shock or planning to maybe go to some other countries and have to sh like deal with ch culture shock. Um, do you have uh, tips for uh, to share, Rosie? Sure, definitely. Um, let's begin with which one should we begin with let's begin oh. with stay grounded yes okay so i guess when we talk about staying grounded it's like when you're feeling what you're feeling basically you have to remind yourself that it's 
normal and that most people experience it. So it's just about like telling yourself that it's okay. Every, other people are probably in the same situation and to not kind of get too stressed or like frustrated with some situations. Because I think one, going back to the different phases, I think it was the second phase when you're, sorry, was it the second or third second phase when you're feeling frustrated, I think often you can kind of blow things up, like a small thing can feel like a big thing. I think that's what they talk about. So I think when you try to stay grounded, it's about reminding yourself like, it's okay, it's fine, don't make it into a big deal instead of like getting so stressed and worked up about like one small thing. So yeah, so that's the first one, stay grounded. Exactly, exactly. I feel I feel like sometimes I, I think to the point that we get kind of depressed. I and I thought that it was just me, right? Like sometimes it doesn't go according to plans. Like when we imagine like living in a country that we always have wanted to go, it's kind of like all nice and shines and rainbow. When you're actually there are many things to adjust, uh, many unexpected things. But um I think there could be some sort of like um how to say there's a a little bit of of um you know that homesick period yeah yeah sure say. yeah and a lot yeah. of my friends actually who 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 went abroad usually go through all of these they'll be texting us like oh i think i'm getting homesick or something like that so there mm. will always be that part and it happens to everyone but just know that you're gonna get over it <laughs> okay definitely all right the next thing is this one cook home comforts so off like we said cuisine and food is a part of culture shock so even though we may love the food in that country just like i love the food in thailand but i still have like my home comforts i still like sometimes make bread i find cheese and i still eat english food and i for me it, it makes me so happy like I obviously still eat Thai food, but it's just something, it's so nice to have some like British food and it feels like, oh, I'm back in the UK. And it does, it makes us feel nice. So I feel like if you're going to a new country, it's good to find like a supermarket where you can find some good food that, yeah, you can maybe make some food at home and then feel like you're back in your own country. Exactly. <laughs> I basically cannot live without rice. I sure. Can. <laughs> no, <laughs> I definitely cannot. Like I remember when I was in Spain, I had to buy like a, a bag of like a big bag of like uh, rice, jasmine yep. rice, and cooked with like because we don't they don't have the rice cook cooker at the home, so okay, um, we have to boil it to like cook it in, yes. in the in the pot. So that's exactly. Like, my right <laughs> <laughs> all right the next thing is get active exactly so getting active is about staying active doing exercise and as many of us know that if we're doing exercise then it's the way that we can feel good about ourselves instead of maybe if we're going through kind of like a frustration period or we're feeling a little bit down, then if we're staying active, then it's helping to lift our mood and to stay positive. And maybe we can join a gym or join a club where you're meeting other people, whether it's people from your home country or people from that country, um, but basically staying active and getting involved with other people. Yes, instead of staying at home. Exactly, because you will get more depressed if you just... Definitely, like, ah, of course. Gonna... Exactly. Yeah. yeah. One thing that really helped me get through the frustration period is actually mm. working and volunteering. Like, I worked at uh, the restaurant, and I felt like yep. because I need to earn a living when I was in the States because everything is so expensive, right? But then I felt yep. also a part of, like, I belong to a community or, or a group of people there. Like I learned the culture and be a part of the community. So that makes me feel so much better after some. Definitely. Yeah, All that's right. a really good point, Kenna. All right. The next thing is stay connected. Oh, okay. So stay connected. Obviously, nowadays, this one is so easily done with the internet, with our phones, 
with Skype, with WhatsApp, with Line. So, I mean, nowadays it's so easy that we don't have to sit at home and write a letter. We can just FaceTime <laughs> somebody, give somebody a call and keep in regular contact with people. And yeah, this is something which I do myself. And I really make an effort in Thailand, even though I've been here for seven years, I still actively contact my friends back home and it doesn't feel like I'm any less close to them, which is kind mm -hmm. of hard to believe. Like I've been here, yes, seven and a half years and we still have like a group chat. I still send them photos. I still FaceTime them. Um, and it's so important. It must be, it must be 100%. Do you usually, let's say that if there's no pandemic, usually you, you go back to England oh. every year? Yeah, so I normally try and go back like every nine months to 12 mm -hmm. months. So yeah, pretty mm -hmm. much kind of every year. So I feel like this time, to be honest, I've reached the point where it's getting a little bit more difficult. So the last time I was back was two years ago like exactly two years ago. And yeah, it's reached the point where I just feel like I need to go back. But so I'm trying, re I mean, to be honest, recently, I've been trying to look into going back sometime this year, even if I've got to do quarantine or whatever, I just mm. feel like it's gone on for too long. So yeah, mm. I would love to go back sometime. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Stay connected. <sighs> <laughs> I know it, it's 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 difficult with the pandemic going on, right? Okay. The next yeah. thing is, I think I think this would be most applicable, especially at the start of your adjustment period. Challenge exactly. yourself. So challenge. Yes. <laughs> so obviously, with this one, it's setting maybe small challenges for ourselves. It doesn't have to be anything big. It just may be something like very small that you, if you're learning a language, for example, that you're going to another country and you make an effort like, okay, I'm going to make an effort to say, hi, how is your day going? I mean, just that, mm -hmm. that in itself could be a small challenge that you're starting a conversation with somebody or you're going for a run, you're joining the gym, anything where you're trying to interact with other people. Or maybe you go into a shop and you make an effort to say like, oh, I don't know what you may ask in a shop or like you may say, hi, how's your day going or anything to kind of push you between, push you beyond your boundaries, basically. For sure, so, yeah. for sure. You're yeah. interacting with the local people. Mm, trying to immerse yourself more with it, the culture. Exactly. So important. Yeah. All right. Last but not least, we have find a guide. But what does yeah. it mean by a guide? Yeah, exactly. It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so I guess it doesn't need to be actually a guide. It could just maybe be somebody. It could just be that you find somebody who you're close to, you feel comfortable with, and that one person maybe could help you be immersed in the culture. It, it, you are, sometimes when you move to a new country or even a new city, actually just having one person can help so, so much. Having one person to show you around, maybe explain some of the culture, explain some things, all of these things can make such a big difference than having nobody. So I think it's talking about like kind of like a middleman there, like an mm. agent, not an agent, but you know what I mean? Somebody there to kind of explain how things work in that country. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yes, 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 yes. Like I, I don't think I could survive, <laughs> not survive, like I, I don't think I would be able to adjust and adapt to the, the culture and the environment as quickly as I did if I don't have a friend that I knew um, when I was in, in Wisconsin in, in when I was in the yep. States. It was extremely difficult if you don't have anyone that you kind of already know. But if you exactly. this is for you. If you are going to study abroad, you go to university or something like that, another way that could be quite interesting, just like Rosie already mentioned, is that if you don't know anyone at all, um, I think it would be nice to 
um, prior to your trip, maybe connect mm. with them in advance um, uh, of the people, maybe the Thai community that lives there. Um, for mm. me in the States, there's a Thai student association. And this thanks to my friend, he actually recommended me that I should contact them before going there. So actually mm. having those like, you know, seniors or people who lived there before you they help a lot they help with like okay this is where you get to you buy this 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 in and um oh you don't have this utensils you don't have the a fan mm. you don't have like a, a a kettle oh yeah i can lend you that i can lend you a jacket i can do this this, this. and i think that's really extremely crucial especially if you're you know settling down uh you need that person a lot and Preferably, I think more than one person would be amazing as well if you can like, you know, find one person to help you all do that. And usually, if if that person is maybe from Thailand or maybe that person kind of already know you, I think they would be more than happy to help you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I couldn't have done it without people in Bangkok. I was For so sure. lucky. You, you yeah, already like you already knew somebody when you when you came here. Yeah, there was like a couple of people that had already. They had studied at Leeds University, had also studied oh. Thai language, and I moved into the same building as them. And it was just like oh. great because I didn't know where to live. Bangkok's such a big place. And they were like, I'll move into this condo. It was in Prakanong, which was like oh. great area at the time. Yeah, when I was there, and they like showed me around and everything. So, oh my God, I couldn't have done it without those two people. Yeah, two oh, of my friends. That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, for me, when I was in the States, like um, um, my friend who actually was a exchange student and she came to Thailand, right? And she kind of yep. know like all the struggles that one has to be oh. through. And and I and I kind of help her with all these and this and that. Not so much, not as much as she did for me when I was in the States. But without yeah. her, I would be like, I wouldn't know what to do this and this and that. For example, <laughs> like just getting my phone, like get, getting like a SIM card, totally, totally, it's just life changing. <laughs> oh my God, I, I uh, totally agree. Exactly. Okay. All right, maybe we, we read the comments a little bit. Um, building, uh, okay, okay, okay. Let me say. The time has gone so quickly today, Kana. I know it's one hour 60 minutes already. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh my gosh. Ah. All right. Maybe we just ask a question for, for them to maybe what have you learned from today's live? Yeah, what have you learned mm. from today's live? A little bit. So I guess maybe most of you, I think the best way to kind of like remember all the things that you just learned is actually to reflect, summarize and reflect, right? <laughs> Convincing. <Yes. laughs> Definitely. This is a question which I always ask my students at the end of class. Whenever I have class, I make everybody tell me one thing. I say, okay, everybody shut your books and tell me one thing that you've learned today. Because it's good. It's nice to review and say out loud what you've exactly learned. So yes, if you have learned anything new, whether it's new vocabulary, whether it's that you anything that you is new to you, then please comment and we would love to yeah. see. I have learned just so many things. I didn't even know, like, uh, you know, in, in they they celebrate <laughs> they celebrate uh, Christmas and summer in Australia. <laughs> that was yes. so new to me. There were so many things I learned today. So oh, comment down. Below. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Comment down below. You you were going to say something first. Yes, I was going to add about to do with having Christmas in summer. Just to add about that. So it is in December, but it's obviously Christmas, but it's obviously summer at that time. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, just to add that. <laughs> right, right? I mean, like, it's it's summer in December in Australia. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. That's why. Crazy. Right? Yeah, <sighs> crazy. <laughs> I couldn't imagine, like, but it's kind of like, it's kind of the same. If you think about it in Thailand, because we are always in summer. <laughs> Yes, there. exactly. <laughs> I mean, everybody, I think a lot of my friends who lived abroad and then just came to Thailand, they were like, this is your cold season. This is your winter. Yeah, exactly. Oh, this is our summer. <laughs> it's not Everybody a bit cold. literally is like that. <laughs> all right. All right. Oh, wow. All right. Um, maybe oh. I think you have a course coming up. So maybe I would just like 
maybe do you want to talk a little bit about it? I think you just, um, uh, I think a lot of people actually commented today's live. Um, how can you learn with Cool Rosie? Like, uh, what, what should I do if I want to learn with Cool Rosie? So maybe you want to talk about a little bit about it? Sure. Okay, so I actually have a new course that was, is actually officially coming out tomorrow. But today, because I have the this live, I decided it kind of makes sense to do like a pre-sale. <laughs> so this um, course is basically focusing on speaking. It's a 13-hour course, and I've divided it into eight different sections. So basically, this course is basically what I found is that Thai people maybe just, they want to talk about different topics but they don't really know like the vocabulary, they maybe don't have the phrases, they don't have the questions to be able to create this conversation. So that's why I decided to create this course. Um, so like I said, it's divided into eight sections. I, I chose eight sections, um, which I thought were kind of like popular, eight, there we go, yeah, popular sections that as people that we often discuss. And um, so I've divided it into, if I hope that I can remember the sections, we have food, we have traveling, we have clothes and shopping, we have movies, we have food, we have sport and fitness, we have friendship, and we have romance and dating. Romance and dating. So it's like these kind of topics that maybe you want to be able to just like chat with to a foreigner, but you kind of don't have the vocabulary, you don't have the questions that you should be asking. So that's why I've created this course, um, which is basically full of vocabulary, full of example sentences. And then I've also included a little bit of grammar. I am not like a grammar freak, so I haven't gone into it super deep, um, but I've given you like an overview and like a, a refresh <laughs> um, just so as you know how to form these different questions, just so you know how to answer these questions. So I've included grammar. I've also included listening activities. So in every chapter, I do a listening activity um, where you have to fill in the gaps and check your listening. Then we go through it. Um, so there's basically so much in there is actually I'm so, so excited about this course because it's basically what I've created is what students have told me that they really, really need. And so that's why yeah, I've done these eight topics because they're the main topics that often we talk about when we're talking to foreigners. We chat about food, we chat about shopping and clothes, sports. Um, so I'm just it's not like very basic vocabulary. I've tried to like make it maybe like idioms or phrasal verbs or vocab that maybe you just wouldn't come up with naturally. And I've showed you how to use them correctly in a sentence. Again, this is something that so many students have problems with that they know this word, but they don't know how to use it in a sentence. Um, so yeah, that's it. So this is it actually officially comes out tomorrow. So, but if you're interested, then obviously come and message me um, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. And I've put down in the link, I think the details of the course should be down. I think, I think the, from my page, I think it will be from my page. I think so. Maybe not from your oh, page. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. Go. Oh, right. it has come up. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, amazing. Right? This one, right? Okay. Yes, exactly. Amazing. Yeah. So basically that's it. Um, if you are interested, then yes, please message me and I will give you more details. But in general, I would say it's for people who have definitely some background of English. It's not beginner's English. Um, it's definitely people who have a basis, but they want to improve themselves. So basically anybody from kind of like pre-intermediate up until pretty much advanced because there's so much in there that would be useful for anybody who's, yeah, even if you have like a good knowledge of English already, there's already so much in there, which I feel like would be useful. Anyway, my spiel is over. <laughs> but yes, if you're interested, please contact me. And yeah, that's my new little picture. And also oh, one more thing to add, one more thing to add. 
basically right now, the offer begins for five days. So it basically starts on the 28th, even though it's the, well, actually 27th, because it's the 27th today until the 1st of June. So it's 3,590 baht. So I say, if you're interested, then don't forget to contact me. Don't hesitate to contact me in the next five days. Dun, dun, dun. End dance for my course. Yes, I'm very super excited about this course, actually. So Amazing. very, very excited to talk about it. Amazing, amazing. I'm I'm, I'm going to enroll for the the romance and dating. <laughs> yes, exactly. This part, you need to get involved. <laughs> it's so interesting. It sounds really interesting. All right. I'm, yeah. I'm just having like a little bit of announcement to make for, for those who have been asking all day long. Our inbox is quite like, it's like burning up, like exploding oh now. Gosh. Um ทุกคนคะสําหรับของคณะนะเอ่อคอร์สวันนี้วันเดย์อังกฤษทรานส์ฟอร์เมชั่นรุ่น 3 ตอนเอ่อมีเป็น professional marketing ขึ้น English for career development เอ่อ uh, English for public speaking and presentation นะคะก็สําหรับใครที่สนใจก็เหมือนกันสามารถทักเข้ามาพูดคุยกันได้นะคะ right yeah um let's read some of the comments I think a lot of people actually commented. How much can you guys understand us today? How much can you understand us? I mean, yeah, it's a good like question. 100%. I know, right? Because we didn't ask that in the beginning. All right. Um, Madison, Wisconsin is yes. It's like super cold. I'm, I felt like a polar bear. Yes. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Kun PM said today I've learned that when Indian people nod their head, uh, it's like, <laughs> yeah, this means yes. This means no. This means no. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> um, um, thank you. This is good for me to learn English listening and getting some experience. Mm. Ah, interesting. Some some people said, Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. so good. 95%. Ha. Wow, that's amazing. 80% amazing. All right. Um, 99%. Oh, I'm so good. Ah, okay. 99.99. Oh, all right. Wow. That's great. 50%. That's good. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. 50 is still great. 90%. 60%. All right. Ooh. All right. We should, the one last question for you guys today is we yes. really want to know this because we are doing, oh, yes. hopefully we're doing a, a series, live series. So yes. what topics should we do next? Mm. Mm. What topics yes. should we do next? Okay. How's today? How, how are you feeling, Rosie? today great today's oh life. my gosh 100 like i'm feeling excellent i'm just shocked at the time color it's like when i talk to you i feel like oh. the time just goes and i'm just like oh my gosh where did it go the time happens every time, time. flies it yeah, does time, time flies, flies when you're having I always fun like, i know and it's not just like i thought that when when we were like okay chatting that's like that's kind of it's always like that right but we are doing yes. live <laughs> this is already one hour and a half <laughs> i know oh my gosh yes <laughs> yeah we can talk for three hours you we guys, actually but, could <laughs> yeah but you guys are probably not here to listen anymore <laughs> <laughs> okay. all right what topics should we talk about next because we are planning to do a live series 
exactly บอกความลับไปแล้ว yeah what what topics should we do next anything that you you are interested in or you want to learn more in particular I think I think a lot of uh, things I think there are a lot of comments asking c r u r o s i experience and and some of the things in in England so I think mm. that should be interesting as well sure mm, let me see. somebody any, any comments yeah. Dating, yeah. I don't know whether that's talking about a to- possible topic. Possibly, mm. possible. Mm. Yeah, I wonder um, what we could talk about. That <laughs> you can, you have a lot to talk about. I have zero experience. <laughs> I'm like, <"Nah." laughs> okay, but I can be the interviewer. So, Rosie, what is your view <laughs> about romance? <laughs> okay, Kun Nantida ups. Kunantida said, "Topic today. Today's topic is very interesting. Thank you. Ah, interesting. Ah, whoops. Read message. Ah, yes, we read your message. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Aww. Ah, Kun Chanaikan, s h i m e h a Chanai Chanaikan, s h i m e h a Thank you for sharing your experiences. I love it. Thank you for watching." Mm. Mm. This one is also interesting. Women, Women dictionary for men. <laughs> Do you have any ideas about this? <laughs> Women dictionary for men. Oh, basically about like how women think. Is it the idea that, like, a, if a woman says yes, she means no. If she means no, she means yes. I think that's the no. idea. Yeah. I think when so. When she says it's it's okay, it s mean it's not. I'm not okay. Yeah, exactly. She, yeah, oh, she, fine. Not, okay. They say fine. Then she's not fine. She's not fine. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. I need that too. <laughs> I need that too. Yeah. Um. Kun p a s h m e h a Your life. Hmm. Wow. Interesting. I think Rosie's life would be interesting. Mine is super boring. Oh no, can I? You. I mean, you said earlier that you went to Spain. I didn't know that. Did like you could share about you've lived in different countries, you've traveled. Yeah, it's an interesting. Yeah. Next time, next time for yes, for sure, for sure. Mm, this one could also be interesting. Although I, I, I don't know if I'm a a good uh, a good representative of American pronunciation, American versus British. Pronunciation. Uh, yeah. mm. I mean, your accent is definitely more American than British. Mm. Mm-hmm. So yes, possibly yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe we can do something about that. <laughs> The thing is, though, there, there, there are some things that I might pronounce like an American, but there yep. will still be something that pronounce like a British. <laughs> so I, I don't even know where I stand. <laughs> um, I think this one could be interesting for Rosie hunting jobs in England. Oh yes, quite possibly. Mm. Yes, mm. possible topic. Mm. For sure, for sure. Oops, Kurosina l a k m a k a That's a topic. <laughs> yeah, education system. Oh, that was an interesting one. Yeah. Yeah. The, the differences. In, the differences in, UK, in Thailand. Oh, right. oh, that's a good one. Okay, that one's quite yeah. interesting. Yeah, we can note that down. Yeah, definitely. All right. Mm. <laughs> I think this could 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 be interesting as well. Live during COVID 19 <laughs> Say again, Kana. Live during COVID 19 Oh my gosh, COVID-19. I know. Oh my gosh, I know. <laughs> Live in pandemic. Yes. <laughs> ah, okay. Um, yeah, I know the questions now. There's a question from Kun Max. What's rosy British comfort food? You have while you miss your home. Oh, it's a good question. Bread, honestly, just bread and cheese, pizza. Even though pizza isn't obviously from England originally, English people still eat a lot of pizza. So yeah, I would mm. say basically bread, cheese, pizza. That's it, mm. pretty much. Mm. Spaghetti. I've been meaning to to ask this. Do you cook? Usually, oh, it's a good question. So, if I eat Thai food, then I don't cook. I can't cook Thai food at all. But if it's like English food, then yes, I do cook. 
Mm. Like very simple things and like salads and things. I don't really know um, they count it as cooking. I feel like it's more like putting stuff together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think I, when I went to Spain, um, I also cooked like caidiao and pat pat from for, okay, for yeah. the host family. And they yeah. were like, that's the most like amazing dishes they ever had. Yes. They were like, yeah. wow, so this is like the signature Thai dish. I was like, no, those are the only two things I know how to make. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, wow, that's so good. <laughs> yeah, but Thai omelets are so different from like British mm. or like Western omelets. Yes, 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 for sure, for sure. Yeah, I think that, do we cover everything? Did I miss anything at all? Yes, Probably I think that is pretty much everything. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think so. We, we got everything. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, thank you so much, you guys, for for watching our lives today. It's been one hour and thirty five minutes. So oh thank gosh. you so much. Um, let yes. us know if you like this live, this kind of long talk like this or not. Let us know in the comment. Uh, leave a like if you like this. Anything you want to? Any message you want to say to the uh, the audience? Um, I'm just so happy to be back again. Like I said, I just feel like I haven't done live for so long. And again, it's just so impressive to see like how many people like to get involved. And even if you can, you can't understand that much, even if you can only understand 5% or 10% or 2%, it really doesn't matter. Um, I think it's so nice that there are so many people watching and wanting to improve themselves. And I just think that's so great. And that's such a good start when you're learning a language it's the determination and that's how you will get better is because you try so yeah so impressed to see so many people actively trying to get involved it makes it so nice and it's been so much fun with you Kanat. so i have to say thank you so so much always always <laughs> such a pleasure like you know i've been begging you to do this so <laughs> of course it's it's been always so nice and i really enjoy like you said time really flies and um very well put of course and i think one of the most important things for for you guys out here and we both as an english teacher would love to provide for you is a safe space and environment where you can use english um without the fear of making mistakes so exactly. um I want we want this to be a space where you can use english more feel comfortable typing in english listening to english and um, just just like rosie said that even though you might not understand everything i think just stay with it you know trying to immerse exactly. yourself with these sounds that would be the most important thing it's all about progress okay it is yeah exactly. small steps all right <laughs> baby steps yes all right oh, so many people say can't wait for the next live love it love this oh, really mu so very much happy. okay thank you so much so yeah guys have a good night thank you thank you rosie thank you everyone thank you have so a good much, night Anna. thank you bye, <laughs> bye everybody right. bye, -bye. bye bye have a good night bye bye